on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line. I'm Ben Hall. Interesting show tonight. We're talking about tax incentives. A lot of people have a lot of questions, concerns, a lot of interest in the way Metro uses tax incentives. There's a new bill that has just been approved by the Metro Council. It's called the Do Better Bill. It requires more information from companies receiving these incentives. And we want to delve into that. What, what do we mean by that? What is it going to do? And we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on tax incentives uh, in the first place? Happy to have with us Odessa Kelly with Stand Up for Nashville. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. And Vonda McDaniel, Central Label, Labor Council of Nashville, the President. Vonda, thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting us. All right, the Do Better Bill. It's passed, it's the law. Um, let's, I, I, wanna, I wanna get into that, but what are we, when we're talking about tax incentives, why do you think we need to even start examining that area? And, and Vonda, I'll start with you. So Nashville is, 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 is in a boom. And so what we believe is that as we continue to grow, that, you know, it's important that development is equitable and that all the citizens um, experience the growth um, that we feel like developers are and what we're seeing in the city. And is, and let me ask, is there a better way to do development, do you think? And what, what, what do you think? Yes. Absolutely, uh, especially when it comes to uh, development that uses public dollars. Um, in Nashville, you know, we're all about trying to create uh, <clears throat> new traditions here in Nashville. So uh, one thing that I know, uh, I've talked to a bunch of people about is that we want to be good stewards of our every dollar we spend, right? That's in your personal budget and what you give is a tax paying dollar. You know, I want every dollar that I go toward an incentive deal or development to make Nashville a better place, you know? I don't want to pigeonhole someone. And do you, think, do you think we've been getting the best bang for our buck when it comes to development and how we're using some of this money? I will let people decide that. Uh, there's an over, overwhelmingly large number of people who don't think so. You know, um, people have been calling to have more transparent transparency of where our public tax dollars go. You know, um, and that's the reason why we created this bill is so you can see. Everyone, every, everyone has the information now, right? So this basically just create a report card that goes to council so they can have all the information that's needed before they approve these deals. So let's, uh, we'll just delve right into that. What, mm -hmm. is, what does this bill require, the Do Better Bill? What does it require? So we, we wanna know what kinds of jobs are going to be created with our development investment. Um, we wanna know whether they're gonna be full-time or part-time jobs. We want to know whether they're going to pay a living wage. We want to know whether the workforce, whether there's going to be a federally approved apprenticeship that's going to be associated with these dollars, mm -hmm. um, well, and how many jobs that they're going to create. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's a way to compare apples to apples. Um, everything looks, all the glitters is not gold. And so sometimes um, when these deals, just when you hear about them and don't have a mechanism for evaluating them, um, you know, the, everything sounds good to begin with. Now, the things you just mentioned, aren't we given that information now? I mean, are there deals out there where we didn't know some of the things you just said? Um, actually, when council um, is asked to vote on these deals, sometimes very little of this information is available at the time. Sometimes it trickles out, um, but now we have a, a systematic way of evaluating each deal based on the same uh, framework and, and mechanics. So I, I think it's better for the council, I think it's better for the city. Uh, by the time we get some of the information, it's so late until the community cannot advocate one way or the other because we, we just don't know what's in the deal. Is there one deal that sticks out for you that um, troubled you or you wish you had more information about? or? Is there something that really brought this on? or Can you pick out one that really troubled you? Well, um, I'll give you an example um, exactly of what the question Vonda just asked and what you're currently asking. Uh, I work at Napier Community Center during the day, 
and we run one of the largest em emergency food banks in Nashville where people come in to gather food. And of course, the first idea that you have of a person who would need to utilize a food bank is a person who is unemployed or you know someone who is in extreme poverty, right? But that's not the case. Uh, after working the food bank for so long, you get to know these people because they come into your doors a lot, right? As I got to know several people, there was one lady in particular I got to know. Uh, this woman worked at the Music City Center and she worked over 30 hours a week and she had to utilize the food bank because sometimes when she did her budget that was an option for her to cut out because she knew that she could come here and get food as an option. No person who's working two jobs or a full, what could be equivalent to a full-time job should ever have to utilize a food bank. And when I think about it, the Music City Center is a public entity. Right? That made me feel real bad that my public dollars went to a person who's looking and willing to work real hard and she's locked into a, the working poor. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want another tax dollar that I spend to go toward a person being locked into the working poor. We're supposed to elevate people. And so that means when the Music City Center was built under this law, they would have had to say, well, there'll be X number of jobs and they'll pay this amount. And you would have theoretically seen this person and thought that person that's not enough money or what what would this bill would do what to combat what you just said well it creates a report card right mm -hmm. so the council the council will see these things right as the report card has it just like anything it has subject matters right and you get graded in those subject matters right now a person doesn't have to a company doesn't have to give that information <laughs> You know, but we would like that. We would think that anyone who's upstanding and coming into our city to do business here would want what's best for every Nashvilleian, right? Uh, I would hope that when we approve deals, uh, we're looking for companies who are thinking about not just their bottom line, but what is in the best interest for us and our community. Is there something, I guess, punitive in there? So let's say, let's say they want you to vote for their um, incentive package, and they promise. A thousand jobs, all at you know, huge figures, and then two years later, they haven't delivered any of that. They're Oof. they're you know, they're half as many jobs, and they're not paying anywhere near what they said they would. So so they haven't followed through on their promise. Is there anything punitive in the bill, um, which is I guess now passed? Is there anything punitive that can be done? I'll let you speak on that, Claude. So let's look at the Dale deal, for example. Yeah. Dale. Um, yeah. Okay, right. So at least there is an opportunity to evaluate what um, was promised initially, what has been delivered, and there is a clawback capability, um, which is pretty standard. But I don't, it's not new. It's always been there, but the ability to exercise that and to evaluate apples to apples again. Um, makes this bill at least a first step in terms of trying to evaluate how economic dollars are spent. So there's a clawback that, that that's always been there. That's always mm -hmm. been there. And this is just a first step. That's right. So do you think more even needs to be done? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, how concerned are you? So I've heard this. So Nashville's booming, yet yeah. we give incentives to people to build here. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, would they have built without the incentive? Do we need to give the incentive for them to build? I mean, in your opinion, what, what is your opinion on that? Are we too generous with incentives? Because the other side is, well, they're not going to, they'll go somewhere else. They'll go to another city. They'll build somewhere else. They'll take those jobs and go. If we don't give them a tax break, if we don't give them this or that, they won't come here and we'll lose those jobs. So where do you think we are? So this bill creates just transparency. It, it doesn't really address the debate about whether economic dollars should be spent. We absolutely believe, we've seen the growth in Nashville, and we absolutely believe that um, economic development is important. Um, but what we don't want to create with our tax dollars is more poverty wage jobs, sure. more temporary jobs. And so for, for us, this is a, a first step in terms of being able to look at what we're doing and how we're spending our money and um, create a path forward in terms of trying to do better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it is more about the pay that the people in that new facility are going to be getting. Is that right? No, it's not just about the pay. 
um, it's about the standards too. Like uh, you keep using the word incentives, mm -hmm. and it's not about the incentives, right? It's really about what is there and the standards that uh, we're requiring on these jobs. Safety is a big part of the Do Better Bill, right? I think we've had what four or five, four, four deaths in the past five or six months. You know, uh, yeah. loose. I'll say that loosely because I don't have it right in front of me. That information, you know, but. Uh, the, the, some of these companies, when you look into them, that the, these persons were working for, their OSHA record is horrendous, right? If we were to have that information, Bill, let's say that we had that information beforehand on a report card and where you could clearly see the OSHA record of a company, right? And let's say that they have a slew of violations, right? It's going to weigh on the impact of whether you want to give your public dollars to this company to do work, right? So it's that type of information that we're asking for, you know. So I, I wouldn't be worried about as far as um, people going somewhere else and taking the job somewhere else. All we're asking for them is to do what's right by every citizen that is here. You know, I want people uh, to come to Nashville and those who are natives here of Nashville to be able to have opportunities to have a good quality of life. And a lot of the, the uh, development deals that are made here, they take that right away from them. And how do they do that? How do the development deals that are made here take the right for a quality of life away from people? Well, when I, uh, when I say that, a person, I, I can't stress it anymore. A, I know people who are going into debt to survive. You shouldn't have to go into debt to, to survive, right? Most people go into debt to create a pathway to something better for them, not to buy food, you know, not to pay bills. So if at the end of the day, if you're working, now we know that that, that debt can be a whole big um, issue on its own, but that is a very true thing, you know, and we shouldn't, that when I say quality of life, a person who is working a full-time job or working, if you have working two jobs and they still can't make ends meet, I think we have a responsibility to look in to see why that is happening. So you're saying the development we've seen downtown hasn't led to um, high income type jobs that people can live on? I'll put it this way. Our uh, Nashville's unemployment rate is lower than the national average, right? That's fantastic. Yet our poverty rate is tinkering anywhere between 17 and 19 percent. So we have an unemployment rate that is lower than the national average. Yet we have a poverty rate that's 17 to 19 percent. What's the correlation there? That means that we have created a class of the working poor, right? We have a too many low wage job here. We have too many places where the only pathway into a job is through a tip agency. We have to correct that, you know? Uh, I, I know too many people who have college degrees who literally you could classify as the working poor. <laughs> it, that's the issue that we have to fix. And we fix that with information. Yes, and we fix it. it. We fix it, um, you're saying, when a company wants to, to come here and build something, they would have to say, well, this job, we're gonna create X number of jobs, it'll pay this amount of money. Is that right? And. And, and we can evaluate if this is the kind of project that needs to, to move forward. Yes, that's the key part of it, right? Is that uh, we're hoping that it would pay a living wage, right? The, the thing is, is that we now have the access to see that and say yes or no. That is, the, that if, if it's on the report card and it's, and it's reported there, we have a right to evaluate what is there and then make a decision. So, okay, we're gonna go to a break, I promise, right after this. But so, all right, so you have hotels. We're a city mm -hmm. that desperately needs hotels. Mm -hmm. Hotels, it's more of a service industry. Some of those jobs aren't paying a ton of money. They aren't. So, so we desperately need hotels, is what people would tell you. If, if that, if, I don't know if we give incentives to hotels, I, I certainly know we have. Uh, uh, so a hotel says, well, here are the jobs, they're service jobs, they're gonna pay this amount, would you say, wait a minute, based on these salaries and what they're talking about, this is not something we should support? 
I would say the answer to that question is that what we're trying to do is help to create opportunity, help to create pathways so that those entry level jobs are just that, entry level jobs. When you look at the ability to have apprenticeship programs, um, those people are actually able to fill a need in our market, get training, and at the end of the investment of of development dollars, they're able to have jobs that have been a raise for them. Um, so, no, we're not saying that we don't need hotels. We understand that entry level jobs are, but we don't want to make the kind of investment that we've been making as a city. And at the end of the day, when all the development is over, uh, still end up with poverty growing in our city. Um, even, even the report that the city has created says that even though um, we have gotten to a place where unemployment is very, very low, the pockets of poverty in this city um, have increased exponentially. And so that's what we hope to address with this Do Better Bill. All right, we'll take a break. If you want to call in, there is the number. It's at the bottom of the screen, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.